to Let's Talk Motorsport, powered by Slipstream Autosports, a show where a couple of blokes have fun chatting all things motor racing. My name is Daniel, and uh, unfortunately, I'm on my own this weekend. Um, the boys can't be with me tonight as they had a massive weekend uh, in Queensland Raceway uh, for round three of the TFH Hire Formula RX-8 series, which we'll be covering next week when they return. So be sure to st um, stay tuned for that. That's going to be one banger of an episode. Um, but stick around tonight because we've got lots to talk about. We've got Formula One, MotoGP, uh, Formula E, and uh, NASCAR. So let's start off with the big one, Formula One. So um, the Formula One circus travel to Red Bull Ring the Aust for, for the Austrian Grand Prix, which is actually technically the, the second race of the triple header that they've got at the moment. Um, and i uh, got to say, it was a slow start, but it became... like. It started to become one of the most boring races of all time, and then it literally finished as one of the most exciting, uh, at least for 2024. It's, it's It was so controversial as well. We, we, we will get into that. Um, and just a quick disclaimer, guys, for those list new to us. Uh, first off, welcome. Hope you are enjoying your day and having a good time listening to this. Uh, we provide all sorts of motorsport news and content uh, uh, worldwide. Um, over on our YouTube and Spotify and TikTok and Instagram and so forth. Any social you can think of, just search up Let's Talk Motorsport, check that out. And we occasionally do live streams. Um, and for example, we usually do an in depth review for Form Formula One um, on our YouTube and TikTok. But unfortunately, we've got a busy schedule this week, so we haven't been able to fit it in. So what you're hearing now will be turned into a YouTube segment. So for example, uh, if you can't listen to the whole thing, it will be uploaded in segments on YouTube and it will be uploaded in full on Spotify. So with that being said, let's dive straight into it. Um, yeah, like I said, it was a very slow start to a whopping Grand Prix. Uh, we didn't really see too much action up until around lap 50 out of 71, about that, or probably around lap 60-ish, uh, when Max Verstappen, um, who led from the start from pole position, that's, that's the usual story with Lando Norris behind, he was getting ever so closer. But then Max struggled with tyre wear. Uh, he was on the hards, his hards, a lot of drivers struggled on the hards this weekend, um, which was interesting. Um, and yeah, so Ty Ware, not, not, not Max's best friend. So he went to go pit lane. He was seven seconds ahead of Lando at this point. He went to go pit. Lando pitted as well, you know, to keep up with Max. And uh, basically... Everything went sideways as soon as Max went into pit lane because that seven second gap became nothing because unfortunately Max had a massively slow stop, um, still faster than uh, stake F1's pit stops um, and also faster than uh, Sergio Perez's lap times. But um, Max Verstappen had a whopping 6.5 second pit stop, which uh, for those new to Formula One, an average pit stop is roughly two to three seconds. Um, three seconds is considered very slow um, for a Formula 1 car. So 6.5 seconds. Whoosh. Whereas Lando Norris, who pitted as well, had a 2.6, 2.9 stop. Um, so he... That's where everything started to go sideways for Max. And then that caused a battle because Lando was only one and a half seconds um, behind Max after that. And that McLaren um, has some... It just it, it looks so quick this weekend. It was so fantastic to see. And, of course, this was a sprint race, sprint weekend as well. So we had a mini sprint race on the Saturday. And uh, Max won that one. Um, but uh, it was a McLaren 2 and 3 with Piastri and Lando um, charging uh, um, Max down. Now, obviously, it was a short race. And they were, they were four seconds behind. But... Um, yeah, it is hard to beat Max, but uh, that McLaren is definitely dangerous for sure. And uh, we certainly saw that in the main race when uh, Max and Lando went neck and neck um, to the point where they actually um, squeezed each other off the track a couple of times. And unfortunately, it ended with tears um, after... I think with four or so laps to go, um, Max Verstappen 
and Lando Norris came together and uh, they both suffered punctures and uh, damage to their cars. Um, now, unfortunately, Max... Uh, sorry, unfortunately, Lando actually ultimately retired from the race um, and Max Verstappen was able to go on the pit lane and come back out again. Um, it's such heartbreak. It was such an epic battle. Lando had every chance to win that race this weekend and unfortunately, again... Uh, it wasn't meant to be. Um, and I've got to say, if you watched the high highlight, by the way, I highly recommend checking out the Formula One highlights um, to understand it a lot more because it was mega. Um, what happened to Max and Lando is, uh, I think from my perspective, uh, Max pretty much pushed or um, nudged Lando off the track, causing the damage. And then uh, as Lando went to try to pass Max after that, Max uh, blocked and uh, squeezed him off the circuit. Um, so it was a bit of a dirty situation. Uh, and in my opinion, I reckon Max Verstappen was at fault there. Uh, that was a bit of a dirty drive on his behalf. Um, and Lando even said that uh, his friendship with Max Verstappen might uh, might have been affected there after that that crash and uh, it's a real shame um to see you know two two blokes going hard having rate like racing hard uh, against each other and it just ends in heartbreak um but that's the thing with motorsport but uh it did create um or it did create a fantastic opportunity for george russell for and mercedes um it, the win literally fell in their lap um, they were sitting comfortably in third position. Um, and all of a sudden, literally, like, cause that's what I mean. Nothing happened for 60 odd laps. I, I had, I was actually doing a, a live watch along over on our TikTok, um, which, uh, so by the way, check out TikTok. Let's talk dot motorsport for that. Um, for, to tune in for live streams such as watch alongs and podcasts, cheeky plug. Um, yeah, I, I had a watch along and I was like, this is a very long race. There's uh, not much is happening. And then all of a sudden, just everything happens all at once. There's Lando, just like Max has a bad stop. Lando's on the back of um, Max. And then all of a sudden, half their tyres are gone. Like what? And suddenly George Russell was winning. It was crazy. It just went from nothing to 100 in a millisecond. It was insane. And it was fantastic. It really turned the race around. Um, and it was a special win for George. Um, it's great to see them win. It's his first win since 22. Um, so it's been a while since then. Um, and it's Mercedes' first win in a while as well. So it's good to see them winning too. Um, it, it's great to see the whole team excited. Toto was very excited. No tables were damaged in the making of this uh, Grand Prix. Um, in terms of Ferrari, though, unfortunately, uh, Charles Leclerc just is having a horrible... Um, run of bad luck at the moment. Um, I don't know what he's done, whether he's uh, stepped on a crack or looked at a black cat or something or walked under a ladder. He's just, ever since Monaco Grand Prix, after that win, he's just had no luck. And unfortunately, he actually suffered damage uh, on lap one. Um, well, it all started with qualifying, to be honest. He just had no pace whatsoever. Uh, and then he also actually damaged the floor as well in qualifying after running wide into the final corner. And unfortunately, they put him in a bad spot um, on lap one, turn one. Um, unfortunately, he, there were three wide into turn one with uh, Piastri and uh, Sergio and himself. And unfortunately, uh, it looks like um, Piastri... Like, it was, a, it was an awkward thing. There was an, you couldn't fit... Um, three cars into turn one. Like, the door was closing very quickly. Uh, and and uh, Leclerc was getting sandwiched in. And unfortunately, uh, Leclerc clipped his front wing, um, which ultimately ruined his day. And then he pitted. And he pitted actually four times or three times um, before the half, da half distance, uh, which was crazy. Um, and the... Got to give credit to the Ferrari mechanics. Um, they had faith that Charles could make it into the points. <laughs> yeah, like he was 18th. He had three tyre changes and uh, they were like, he can still get points. He can still get points. And uh, for reference, guys, he finished 11th. So he was he got very close. Uh, overall, a 
a slow race, but a very, very enjoyable ending, uh, which was very, very cool to see. So let's have a look at the results here. We've got George Russell winning for Mercedes ahead of Oscar Piastri and Carlos Sainz. Um, Lewis Hamilton in finishes fourth position. In my opinion, Carlos Sainz, um, where he's going to end up next year, because, of course, Lewis Hamilton is going to be taking his seat at the end of this season. Um, I reckon he might end up at Alpine. Um, personally, I would like to see him in Mercedes because um, I want to see him in a competitive seat. Um, but Williams could benefit from his experience as well, um, as Williams is struggling a bit. And they've got a driver at the moment that, Shouldn't really be in Formula 1, in my opinion. Logan Sargent. Um, I don't think... I personally don't think he was ready for Formula 1. Uh, so he was thrown in the deep end pretty early. So I think Car um, Carlos Sainz can benefit um, Williams there. Uh, that'll be very interesting to see how that unfolds. But uh, it's, a very, it's highly suspected that he will most likely end up at Alpine. But who knows? Uh, Lewis Hamilton finished fourth, like I said. Max Verstappen fifth. Now, the funny thing is here with Max here is um, despite finishing... Uh, sorry, despite that crash, and he actually got a 10-second penalty as well, um, he still finished fifth place, right? Obviously, he had about 16 seconds... He was 16 seconds uh, away from Nico Hülkenberg in sixth. But what I want to point out is P7, Sergio Perez, like, he's... Despite all that drama Max had, he, he still finished ahead of his teammate, Sergio Perez. Now, if you've listened to our show on Radio Italiana or our podcast on Spotify and YouTube, you would know that our opinion on uh, Sergio Perez is quite low. Uh, we personally do not like him. And, well, he's a great guy, but he does not deserve that seat and of course ever since that he got announced as Red Bull's driver for 25 and 26 um he's been performing absolute horribly um so hopefully we can see a surprise move where they kick Perez out and give someone else that Red Bull seat because unfortunately in my opinion he does not deserve it and especially when there's Daniel Ricciardo who finished ninth and like I said at the beginning it was a crucial weekend for Daniel Ricciardo because um we're still waiting to hear who will be taking that seat next year whether it will be him or it will be Liam Lawson because there's rumors floating around there and uh, for Daniel Ricciardo to get into the points compared to his teammate Yuki in 14th um, I reckon Danny Rick will end up staying at RB who knows he could even take Sergio Perez's place I would love to see them swap um, just because I'm a Danny fan at heart um, but I would love to see Liam at, in the uh, in the Formula 1 grid next year hopefully but uh yeah, no, Sergio does, definitely does not deserve that seat whatsoever. Um, Kevin Magnussen, P8. Good work from him for the Haas team. Um, so double points for the Haas. It's solid 12 points. Um, so well done to them. And Pierre Gasly uh, finished P10 for Alpine. One point ahead of Charles Leclerc uh, and his teammate Esteban Ocon in P12. Now, that, that was a fun little battle between them. Uh, when I say fun, I mean sassy. Now, also similar to Perez, I don't think Ocon deserves that seat as well, and uh, I think Alpine agreed to, um, as he has been announced that he'll be leaving the team at the end of the 24th season. Um, it's just like, and the funny thing is the broadcast, because we've seen numerous times over and over again um, with Gasly and Ocon. Ocon is very dangerous. He, the amount of times he squeezed Gasly off the circuit almost um, in this Grand Prix, and of course he actually sent Gasly on two wheels in Monaco. Um, it's just crazy. Like he's just he can't drive. He doesn't know how to drive cleanly, and he doesn't know how to be a team player either, in my opinion. So, uh, and it's funny when Pierre finally passed Ocon. Uh, he said "ciao" on the radio. That was fantastic. Absolutely loved that. Um, but uh, yeah, I, in in saying that as well, as I said, Carlos Sainz might be there replacing Ocon. Um, of course, Gasly's staying there. He signed a multi-year deal with the team, so he'll be there, I think, till the end of 26. Um, I hope as much as Carlos Sainz is highly poised to go there, I reckon Jack Doohan could take that seat. That'll be very cool. He deserves a shot in Formula 1. 
There's also been talks about Mick Schumacher as well. They had a test a day or at least a test day coming up between the two of them um, to maybe determine who will be taking that seat. So uh, that'll be very interesting to, to see. We, of course, will be covering all of that on our show and our social medias as well. So be sure to follow that as well to keep up to date with all the Formula One news. Um, another one that got extended for some particular reason, um, Lance Stroll finished 13th for Aston. Aston had a horrible weekend. Um, their pace has just gone out the window like there's no tomorrow. Um, they've sort of gone, they haven't learned anything from last year and have gone backwards. Speaking of backwards, Yuki Tsunoda has had a terrible weekend, uh, finishes P14 with for RB. Now, RB had a terrible um, Barcelona Grand Prix. They had some new upgrades that didn't quite work out. Um, and they're still dealing with them this weekend. From what I understand, they actually switched. Uh, so one car actually had the upgrades, one car didn't. Um, I don't know how that all worked, um, but it looks like it didn't work for Yuki, unfortunately. And uh, P15, Alex Albon, tough day for Williams as well. Um, and then Valtteri Bottas in 16th with Joe in 17th. Fernando Alonso, 18th, that's not where he belongs. I think he, he also got a penalty for pushing Joe off the circuit. Uh, Logan Sargent as well in 19th and Lando Norris, as we said, DNF'd. Um, which was really unfortunate for him. And back on that battle, like I said, it, it was a real shame, honestly. Um, and we saw it coming. It's been it's been brewing for quite some time now. Like even midway last year, I reckon. Um, but we especially saw it this year with especially Miami, um, where Lando beat Max on pace. Um, Bar literally last weekend at Barcelona, Lando literally had, was a lap or two away from overtaking Max for the win. And unfortunately, he tried passing him this time around and Max wouldn't didn't have a bar of it. Um, so hopefully uh, we see another fight in Silverstone. Maybe Lando could... Uh, he'll be looking for some revenge, that's for sure. Um, so I reckon tune in next week when we cover the Silverstone Grand Prix. It's going to be a whopper. And uh, if all goes well, I'll be doing a live watch along over on our TikTok as well, like I said. Um, having a look at the driver standings, uh, Max Verstappen still leads the way ahead of Lando Norris. So, yeah, um, now the gap is rather large, but... Uh, it's good to see them 1-2 with Charles in third per lace. Only 15 points away is Carlos Sides. Sergio Perez has dropped out to fifth. Uh, and then Oscar Piastri is behind him there, six points behind. Uh, then we've got George Russell, Lewis Hamilton. Fernando Alonso is still in the top 10 somehow after despite Aston Martin's downfall at the moment. Yuki Tsunoda is sitting in the top 10 in 10th, only two points clear of Lance Stroll. Then we've got Nico Hulkenberg, Daniel Ricciardo, Oli Behrman, uh, who only had that one round in Jeddah, is 14th still. Uh, he was 13th last week, so he, he's still hang holding on with six points there. Pierre Gasly is tying with him in 15th with Kevin Magnussen, 15th. Ocon, 17th. Albon, Joe Guan Yu, Bottas, and last but not least is Logan Sargent. And uh, looking at the team standings, we've got Red Bull leading the way ahead of Ferrari. Uh, that's not going to change at all. I reckon the gap is quite quite big. Actually, no, it's closing in now that uh, Perez is having some bad runs. But keep in mind, Ferrari uh, with Leclerc, he hasn't had much luck, unfortunately. Um, but he's still getting more consistent um, team points than uh, Perez is. Uh, then we've got McLaren in third place ahead of their factory uh, supply, engine supplier, Mercedes, and fourth. Fifth is Aston, sixth RB, Haas, Alpine, Williams, and last but not least, Stake F1, Kick Sauber. So that's it for Formula One. Next up is, of course, Silverstone Grand Prix next weekend, the last of the triple header. So that's going to be rather, rather exciting. So be sure to check that out. And, uh, that's going to be epic. But uh, uh, And on that note, that is actually the end of our show. I do apologize. It is rather small this time around, um, given it's just me. Uh, if I did have Alex and Ivan, we'll be rambling on for days. But uh, we'll be doing that next week, of course, when they uh, when we discuss all the action from uh, round three of the Formula RX-8 series. So stick around for that next week. Um, and if you did miss the, re the earlier part of the show or you um, want to check it out again, you can go to our Spotify um, for the full episode or go to YouTube, we'll be posting um, these this show in segments. For example, Formula 1 will be Formula 1. Uh, it will be uploaded pretty much 
once every day so be sure to check out our youtube for that as well and keep up to date with our social media um like i said we do live streams uh we do watch alongs we do live podcasts on our tiktok and youtube so be sure to tune into our social media and stay up to date with our instagram and facebook and stuff where we tell you when we're doing that so you can join in ask questions and you will be featured in our podcasts um and uh, be sure to subscribe and stuff and you haven't um and uh once again thanks for radio Taliana for providing us providing our show once again uh it's always amazing being here in this amazing facility um and uh, hope you all got, hope you, everyone has a great rest of their weekend or sorry great rest of their week and uh hope to see you next week for some more motorsport chit chat uh my name is daniel and of course you can find us on let's talk motorsport everywhere on social media just search for the let's talk motorsport with the yellow icon and uh i'll catch you next week bye for now